Let all the other names fade away Till there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place
Praise God, church. God is good. And all the time. Wonderful. I want to welcome you to this service today because this is the place you ought to be. I want to thank you so much for being here. And I want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior. Good morning and a happy new year. We haven't seen each other, isn't it, this year, have you? Not yet. Now, uh, today happens to be the fourth Sunday, and indeed it is for the year and for the month. I want you to feel at home. My name is Eric Wishero, and I'm born again. Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be happy in it. I welcome you to the house of the Lord. You feel relaxed and know that there's warmth, you appreciate it, and you also love you when you're here. So at this point in time, I want to remind you of our theme that is running this year. And you can all read it in front here. I want us to read together reform our ways and live. Reform our ways and live. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you, looking upon you as, our, as you minister to our hearts from this pulpit, so that your word may be heard and may come through. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We want to go through the psalm of the day, and the psalm is Psalm 95. Psalm 95. And we read, if you're there. Come, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the wilderness where your ancestors tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, they are the people whose hearts go astray, and they have, known, they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter the rest. They, they shall never enter my rest. Glory be to God. That's the psalm for today. And just before we get down, I want to ask all the children who are here that we have a Sunday service. They can all go to Hall 1 to continue with the worship. And now, continuing with the worship, I want to ask the praise team to carry on at this point in time. Me? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are you victors in Jesus Christ? Yes, we are. Are you victors in Jesus Christ? Yes, we are. <laughs> so today I'm going to teach you a new song. It's okay. To me shinda kwa jina la Yesu to me simama kazi ya msalaba Yes. 
Okay, you've gotten the song? Praise God.
Let us be seated for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to come before you this morning. We are so full of gratefulness and thanksgiving to you for your faithfulness. Jehovah Lord, we want to recognize this morning your power, your might, your honor, your glory, your majesty, your splendor. We want to uplift your holy name this morning, Lord. And we want to thank you for who you are. Jehovah, you are the creator of the universe, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is in it, O Lord. We want to worship you this morning together with the angels in heaven and to say, holy, holy, holy art thou, because you are God. Father, we want to recognize your power and your greatness, O Lord. We want to remember all the things that you have done, your creation and your being, O Lord. And Father, together with all the holy angels of heaven, we want to lift up your name this morning. Father, we want to thank you very dearly for all the things that you continue doing for us on a day-to-day -day basis, Father. Indeed, were we to count them, we would not be able to finish. Because, Lord, you do everything and all for all of us, O oh Lord. We want to thank you for the gift of life. We want to thank you for the gift of good health. We want to thank you for our jobs, for our schools, for our careers. We want to thank you, Lord, for all the things that you provide for us, O oh Lord even for your protection, for your companionship, for your love, not forgetting the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who when he came to this earth, he died for us. And God, he, you gave us a second chance at eternity. And so, Father, this morning, we do not want to forget, Lord, of the wonderful things you have done. Jehovah, many of us have been ill, and you have healed us. Many of us have gone through difficult situations, Lord, and you have redeemed us from those situations, O oh Lord. Many of us have gone through troubled times, and Father, you have helped us, O oh Lord. Some of us, Jehovah, our businesses were not doing well. And now, Lord, there's a semblance of hope. Jehovah, we can see light at the end of the tunnel. We thank you even for crossing us into 2022, Lord, because we know there are many who did not see this year. But Father, we are here, sitting and kneeling in your sanctuary, praising you and uplifting our voices to you, Jehovah. We do not take it for granted, O Lord. Father, we continue asking you that you input the spirit of thankfulness into our hearts so that we may never forget all that you do for us, mighty one of heaven. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our nation. We thank you for our church, O Lord. We thank you for our community and those that we live with. Thank you so much for all the things, Father, that you do for us on a day-to-day -day basis, Jehovah. And now, mighty one of heaven, we want to ask you that you may forgive us our sins. Lord, we are flesh and blood, and sinfulness is in us, because that is our nature. But we are asking you that you will remember that blood that was shed on the cross, that covers us. And so when you look at us, Father, you do not see our sinfulness. You see that blood that was shed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember that blood. And so this morning, as we come to you, O Lord, asking you that you forgive us, we ask you that you may pardon us for those things that we have done and those things that we have failed to do. Those things that we, are, we have done that are so terrible even for us to mention this morning. Jehovah, you know our hearts and you can see the sinfulness in it, O Lord. You know those things that we are hiding, those things that we do in the dark, those things that we do deliberately, those things that I know, annoy you, O Lord. Father, we ask you that you pardon us this morning. Jehovah, we want to remember our anger, our bitterness, our jealousy, our envy, our folly, the things that afflict us, O Lord, that make you, Lord, wonder whether we are Christians, Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. Forgive us this morning. We ask you that you put in us the spirit of love, the spirit of humility and kindness, a spirit of forgiveness, O oh Lord, and reaching out, O oh Lord. Each one of us here is guilty of sinning against another. We ask you that you pardon us, Lord, even as we go into 2022, Jehovah. Father, that you may clean our slate and pardon us against all our unrighteousness, so that, Lord God, 
our sinfulness may not prevent your blessings from reaching unto us, O Lord Jehovah Almighty. Lord God, we want to bring our requests to you this morning. O Lord, we know that each one of us seated here and the many needs that are worshiping you across the globe this morning, every one of us has a request that they want to bring before you. I want to ask you that you consider the unspoken requests, the silent requests, those things that uh, uh, disturb us, those things that uh, make our lives difficult, oh Lord. We are asking you that you re remember us this morning because Lord, you are God and you have told us that we can call upon you on the day of trouble and that you will hear us and forgive us our, our, our problems, oh Lord. That is found in the book of Psalm 50, verse 15, oh Lord. And so this morning we are bringing upon you, Lord, our concerns, Jehovah, this morning. We ask you that you hear us and answer us so that your name may be glorified. Jehovah, we bring before you those that are not well. There are many who are afflicted, oh Lord, in hospitals at home. Those that I may even be sitting here amongst us, O oh Lord. Jehovah, we ask you that you release your hand of mercy and touch each one of them, O oh great Jehovah. You are the mighty healer and you are the great uh, healer, O oh Jehovah. And so we ask you that you heal each one of us. Those that are sick in many forms, mentally, physically, O oh Lord, even spiritually. Jehovah, that you may heal us, O oh Lord. Remember those of our relatives who are also struggling of diseases in many places, O oh Lord. Father, we have those who have st are struggling with the COVID pandemic, others are at home with cancers and high blood pressures and depression, Lord, and many other illnesses, Jehovah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you that you remember each one of them this morning. We remember those that are mourning, having lost their loved ones, O oh Lord. Jehovah, we know that there are people who are really crying at this hour, O oh Lord, because of their afflictions. Remember our Elder Nivosoa, Lord, who has lost her brother in Malagasy, O oh Lord. Remember her, O oh Lord, and her family. Remember the other families that are also mourning, the Wameshe, O oh Lord. Father, reach out your hand of mercy upon them and wipe their tears, O oh Lord. But we mourn in faith and in hope, knowing that, Lord God, on that beautiful morning, we shall meet with our loved ones in glory. And so we ask you that you continue comforting those that are mourning Jehovah. We pray for those that are looking for spouses, those that are looking for jobs and employment, those are, that are struggling financially, oh Lord, those that need school fees, those that need uh, even uh, basic uh, necessities like food and shelter, Jehovah, those are the, that are in the streets, those that are afflicted in many ways, oh Lord, Jehovah, remember each one, all those people, oh Lord, because we might not know them, but you know them, oh Lord. Remember our children who are struggling through so many vices, Jehovah. We have children going through addictions, oh Lord, sexual addictions, pornography, homosexuality. There are those that are going through uh, other addictions like uh, alcohol and drugs, Jehovah. We ask you in the mighty name of Jesus that you may release them from these uh, trappings, these uh, imprisonments, oh Lord. So that Lord God Almighty, it, it says that when, that when there's truth, Lord, you do set us free. Set our children free, O oh Lord, and help them to taste and see that you're good, that those on our side are more and that they are better, O oh Lord. We commit those families and those children before you this morning. We pray for our youth, Lord, that you will come forth through for them, O oh Lord, and remember them. Remember our children who are even candidates, remember them, them as well this year, O oh Lord. Mighty one of heaven, we want to pray for our country, Kenya. Father, this is a difficult year and a general circumstances, Lord. We are looking at an election year where there's so much that is happening, so many lies that will be peddled, so many promises, so much conflict that may happen, O oh Lord. But Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you that you intervene, that you bring peace this year, O oh Lord, that you give us your guidance, that you give us your wisdom, that you point to us, the leaders that you yourself have chosen, O oh Lord, that Father, this decision may be left to you, O oh Lord, because you know you're the one who selects the leaders of our nation, O oh Lord. Give us leaders who are wise, who are God-fearing, who are knowledgeable, who, who are truthful, who have integrity, Jehovah, O oh Lord. And so we are praying for all the seats that are going to be replaced, from the MCA all the way to the presidential seat, O oh Lord. Father, come through for us, O oh Lord. We, we also pray for the other institutions, the judiciary, the legislature, O oh Lord, even the executive, that, Lord, you will guide this nation in the right way, Father. We pray for peace. Peace because without peace, Lord, 
the country will disintegrate, oh Lord. So remember us, and remember the needs that are worshiping you and praying for this country, that you shall hear us. And as you have done in the past, we have seen your faithfulness in the past for Kenya. We know that even this year, Lord, you shall stand with us. Mighty one of heaven, we want to pray for the church of Jesus Christ, the church where you are worshiped and where we, we gather together to pray, oh Lord. Father, we also pray for its leadership, remembering our theme of this year, that we should reform in order that we may live, O oh Lord. Help the church to go through its reformation. And the church is us, O oh Lord. Reform our hearts, reform our minds, reform our, even our resources, O oh Lord. So that, Lord God, when towards the end of this year, we shall lift up our hands and say, we have indeed seen the Lord reform us. We pray for the top leadership of our church. We pray for all the ministers. We pray for the elders and the deacons. We pray for all the committees and members of those committees, Father. Pray for even our choirs and our Sunday school. We pray that you will guide us into this year through the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, that there shall be love, that there shall be unity, that there shall be togetherness, O oh Lord. We pray even for the projects of this church, the Ruiru project for the Women's Guild. We pray for the Kileresho project. We pray even for all the other projects in Hawa, in Tumaini, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will see your hand even as we continue to raise funds to be able to grow your church, O oh Lord. And so we commit everything before you because we know that you are God. And when we call you, you do hear us and you do answer us. And so this morning we want to close this prayer by committing the one who will bring the word before you. We want to pray for Reverend Dorcas as she brings the word that you have placed in her heart. Father, may she only be an instrument of your word. But Lord, you will tell us what it is that you have prepared for us this morning. Be with her, speak through her, O oh Lord, and bless her. And the word that she, should, she will pray, may it land on soft hearts. And so we thank you and we bless you this morning. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and we live. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. The worship continues as we invite the choir to do a hymn for us. This, think of his goodness to you. I want to ask you to be upstanding as we do the song.
now it's time for our intimations. The session clerk will do it. Good afternoon, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. God is good and all the time. And that is his nature. Um, my name is Sarah Finrugu. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. And I am delighted to be in his house this day. Um, this uh, afternoon, I would like to welcome any visitor any person who has not um, worshipped with us for a long time or is new in this church, kindly stand up. Yes, we have a visitor. Yeah, several visitors. Thank you. Our choir. very much our visitors for choosing to come and worship with us at St. Andrews. You feel most welcome. We appreciate you. We love you. And come again when you can. And if you are staying longer, kindly take, uh, come to our church offices and uh, be guided on how you can be a member of this church. If you are going away, take our greetings with you. We are delighted to have you. And also uh, to welcome all of us. This is a day like not any other. So kindly feel most welcome into your church. Um, this afternoon we have appreciation. The church flowers in front of us are the church that the flowers that have beautified the church this morning and afternoon um, are a thanksgiving donated by Riloe and Ian Kiaraho as a thanksgiving to God following their wedding on 4th of December 2021. Special thanks to all members of the clergy, all the elders, District 1 and 2, Youth Choir, Women's Guild, and you members of the church for your prayers and presence and support. May God continue to bless you. I wonder whether the, the Ridois, Ridoy and Keraho are here. I can see them. Kindly stand so that we can appreciate you. Thank you very much. Let us appreciate them. We thank the Lord for you, and we pray that your marriage is going to last forever. Uh, appreciation also from Jage and Josephine Viga and the entire Kaumbudo family. Um, they are sending their gratitude to members of District 13 and 17 for their prayers, support, and encouragement following the call to eternal glory of their mother and family matri matriarch, Carol Kaumbudo. Special thanks and appreciation to our parish moderator, Reverend Ngere, for a very encouraging tribute read at the funeral. They, uh, they felt blessed in a very special way. Um, they, were, they say that you are well represented by the Caring Church family, their district, their elder, Dr. Ishangi and Mary Ishangi, Elder Veronica and Mr. Wambogo, Deacon Lucio Minde, and other members of, uh, from Meru who worship at St. Andrews. Pre-baptism classes are ongoing every Saturday um, from 9 a.m. to 11 in lecture room one and two. Kindly contact our evangelist for the same. The ICT, media, the ICT, the media team has slots for additional volunteers. If you have a son or daughter, or you are a son or daughter in the sanctuary, and you feel that you want to volunteer in this uh, uh, noble venture, 
kindly uh, come and serve in the house of God. So uh, parents, if you have uh, children who can volunteer, kindly encourage them. And if they are here, I am also encouraging them to come and, and volunteer in the Lord's house. The, choir is also, the, the youth choir is also inviting young persons who feel like they want to sing sacred music to come and join them to play instruments and, uh, and also sing. They meet here every Wednesday and Friday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, there is a devotional book. Kindly let us have it on the screens. A devotional book written by three of our ministers, Reverend Gato, Reverend Mudoi, and Reverend Bae, and uh, it is a guide for devotional guide for 2022 by the name of Pilgrim's Companion. As a way of enriching your quiet time and family devotion, you are encouraged to get yourself a copy um, from a table. I don't know whether the table is there, but you can also contact the office uh, of uh, the, H, uh, the admin so that you can get a copy during the week. It is going at 300 shillings. Uh, we are also being encouraged to register online so that when we come on Sunday, we only take our temperatures and it is easier for us to come into church without uh, wasting a lot of time. Um, the book by the, Rev the very Reverend Dr. George Wanjao, um, From the Pulpit to the Heart, is on sale kindly contact the church office so that you can get yourself a copy. Um, there is a bereavement that we announced last Sunday of Bernard Wamishi of District 9 who went to be with the Lord. Uh, he, he, he was a husband to Jen Rose Wamishi uh, who serves as a deacon in our church. He was a brother to Kuria and Beatrice Kuria of District 15, Dr. S.M. Kimuhu and Rachel Kimuhu, Hannah Mwangi and Joseph Mwangi, Peter Mboro and Rahab Mboro, uh, Francis and Beatrice Kuria, and many others. Um, the funeral service for the, for the late Bernard Wamichi will be on Tuesday from 9 a.m. at PCS and Andrews, uh, followed by Barrio the same day at Maragua. Let us continue upholding this family in prayer, and we also uh, help them where we can. Uh, just a reminder, the Sunday school for the 11.30 a.m. has started, so do not let the children stay here. They may not benefit as much as when they are here than they benefit when they go to the uh, church school. Kindly release them. And if you left some children at home, remember to come with them on Sunday so that they can fellowship with their fellow children. All the, the district fellowships are going to be announced in our forums, our district forums. So today we are not going to announce them. God bless you, and worship continues. Thank you very much. Uh, we, District 5 has a small presentation that you're going to do, and you're going to try and observe the COVID protocols. So if you're a member of District 5, let's just line up here and we do. And I want to ask the choir to give us the notes, if it's possible. To God be the glory.
Thank you, thank you very much, District 5, for those of you able to come. It's God's goodness that you've been able to be here. Now it's a serious moment when you're going to have the Bible readings, and I'm going to call upon the Bible readers to take up the cue. Good morning, church. Yes. Our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, from verse 1 to 14. Jeremiah, chapter 7, from verse 1 to 14. As you find the scripture, my name is Catherine Wanyeki. I'm born again. So let's read together. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord of my Almighty, the God of Israel says. Reform your ways and your actions and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the alien, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave to your forefathers, forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods? I repeat that. Burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which bears my name and say, we are safe. Safe to do all these detestable things? Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Verse 12. <coughs> Go now to the place in Shiloh, where I first made a dwelling for my name, and see what I did to it because of the weak wickedness of my people Israel. While you are doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name. The temple you trust in the place I gave to you and your fathers. This is the word of the Lord. Good afternoon, church, and praise God. My name is Wamboy. I'll take you through the second reading that comes from John, chapter 4, verses 21 to 26. If you are there, let's read together. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is, God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. That's the word of God. Please. Thank you very much, Bible readers. You've done it so well. You're audible. Today's service is being led by District 5. My name once again is uh, Eric Gishero. I'm the elder in the district. And District 5 spreads from Gomba Estate, Kasarani, Mweki, 
Thome, it goes to Zimmerman, Kiamombi, and all the way to Power West. So if you're here and you don't have a district and you wish to join us, please you can do that, you can see us any moment. To prepare our hearts for the word of God delivered by our very own minister, Reverend Dorcas Kamau, who will be upstanding once again to be led by the choir in the hymn, Anywhere with Jesus. That is RS423. haven't met in this new year 2022 and our God is good he has taken care of us he has given us the reason to continue thanking him and honoring him for his goodness this is the time and the day that the Lord has made we should be glad and rejoice in it my name is Dolkas Kamau I am saved I love God so much for he loved me before I knew it and before I realized how he looks for me, he takes care of me. I, I, I surrendered to him when I came to know that his love is greater than any other love. The love of my parents, the love of my siblings, the love of my friends, it is beyond that. And so I surrendered to him and that is why I testify that he's my Lord and my Savior. He has taken care of us all in the two years of 2020, 2021, the very heavy years, and we are praying that this year is going to have a difference. Do you agree with me? Yes, we pray that this year is going to have a difference even as we continue listening to the news of Omicron and the other issues that we have. We all personally have issues but we trust that God will walk with us. So today, we, are, we have the theme of the year, year 2022, which is coming from Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 3b, and we have 
made it into a very simple sentence that you can understand, reform your ways and leave. The Bible is saying, reform your ways and your actions and I will let you live in this place. So when you reform your ways, God is pronouncing today that you let, let you live in this place. So let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, you are God at all times. We have just sung anywhere that we are with you, things go well. We are always very safe. And that is why we are declaring that we would love to be at your place, would li like to walk with you in all our ways. As we look into the word that you've given us today, help us, O oh God, to understand you. For this is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. The title for today's sermon is The Starting Point. And as I was looking at this theme of Reform Your Ways, I was led to think about how sometimes you are given assignments, very sensitive assignments, and especially to correct someone. Be it in the family, you want to correct your children. Be it in the family, you want to correct or to arrest something, maybe being done by your husband or your, your wife. Be it at workplaces, sometimes bosses are given that assignment and even colleagues are given that, such an assignment. And sometimes you do not know how to start it. Sometimes you are wondering where, how, when do I do this assignment? It looks so great that sometimes you feel like it is a heavy task that you're called to do. That is the same thing that happened to the prophets of the Old Testament, and even Jesus Christ had a very, very serious assignment, which was very sensitive to call people to the kingdom of God. And one of these prophets we are led to understand is Jeremiah. Jeremiah was called to be a prophet at a very, very hard time. But because God had called him and had told him that he was going to be with him, even though he was young, as I was reading through, I was led to understand that he was around 18 years. And he was called and given the assignment, a very sensitive assignment. He was to talk to the people of Israel. He was to specifically prophesy to the people of Judah it wasn't a, an easy assignment. Just as in our daily living, we do not know where to start. We even don't know the place. We even don't know the wordings to use. But God led Jeremiah to start at the gate of the temple. And you can imagine, uh, like you have come in, someone is standing by the gate and telling you new such things that have been written in Jeremiah chapter 7 and where we have read verses 1 to, it was supposed to go up to 15. And those are touchy issues. And even Jesus Christ, as he met the Samaritan woman, it wasn't easy. Talking to a woman, he was a Jew, and now this is the Samaritan woman, and they are confessing, and the disciples are not there. And Jesus is read until that woman declares, you are a prophet. You are telling me things that no one else knows. You are telling me my life. You are just opening up my life. And so Jesus reads this woman to get to understand that he's the Messiah. And so as we look at the book of Jeremiah, we get to understand that Jeremiah stood at a place where it mattered most to the Israelites. The Israelites had a lot of a lot of regard, high regard for the temple, just as we have regard for our church. When we come here, we feel we are connected to God. When we come here, we feel like we are bringing all our things to him. And so he stood at the gate of the place where it mattered most. People are coming to worship. People are coming to offer their sacrifices. People are coming to, 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 to meet. And people are coming for annual festivals, and everything that is done in a church, just like we do it in our church today, we do a lot of things. And so Jeremiah is bringing a different story. People are coming with all their innocence, just as I and you came. 
We came here with all the innocence before God, and we believe that we are coming here to worship our Heavenly Father. And so Jeremiah comes in at the gate to declare something that is not expected. And when you read through, you find that after declaration of this message and so many others, at around chapter 26, he, he, he's about to be put to death. But then the officials of Judah just come to his rescue. And so when I look at this prophecy of Jeremiah, I am led to the first, the first chapter, whereby the word of God says, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. So he was sent for that sensitive assignment to go and declare that if you people do not change, if you do not reform, if you do not look at your life and turn away from your sins, I'm going to put you to judgment. I am going to destroy you. And even this temple that you talk about, where you run to for your safety, where you run to for your rescue, it is going to be put down. And so this message was not very pleasant to the, to the, to the people of Judah. They, 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 they took it. And it wasn't very, very easy. Just like us today, if someone was to come and declare to you all who you have done, and then you feel touched, you feel like it is getting into you, you can respond. And therefore, basically, this is what, what is called the temple sermon. The temple sermon was given by Jeremiah, and he was mentioning things that were happening among the people. One of them was idolatry. The people who lived at that time, they were bringing in other gods in their lives. And remember, God had made covenant with, with, with Moses and with all the matriarchs that were there, that I'll be your God. Make me your God. I am a jealous God. That is what the, 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 the Ten Commandments uh, state. That he's a jealous God is not be mixed with any other thing. I'm not sure if today we are mixing our God with other things that we put so high. And so Jeremiah was speaking against idolatry. Jeremiah was speaking against injustices. There were so many injustices at that time. Jeremiah was also speaking about a coming judgment. Even today, the word of God is declare, declaring that if we don't leave our sins, if we don't observe, if we don't reform our ways, then we'll be destroyed. We may not be destroyed physically, but we may be destroyed spiritually. We may be destroyed emotionally. We may be destroyed psychologically, the way we process our things and the way we, pro we, 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 we respond to the various issues that we have. And therefore, in summary, these five things were in the, 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 the temple sermon. One, God was speaking through Jeremiah and saying, there is false belief that the temple cannot be destroyed. So there was false. It was not true. It was false that the temple could not be destroyed. And so people of Judah were just bragging around that this temple is so beautiful that it cannot be put down. But when we read later, we find that the temple is destroyed. Even the walls are destroyed. Even the people are taken to captivity. And that is what Jeremiah was prophesying in his prophecies. Number two, he was also talking about hypocrisy. There were so many hypocrites, people who are doing other things during other days, people who are involving themselves in other things that were not very pleasant before God. And then on the time to come and, 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 and fellowship together, they were coming in, if I may call it, the holier than thou thing. They were clothing themselves with that holier than thou appearance. With that appearance. I'm sure, uh, and sorry to quote this, when we have holy communion, see, we look very holy. Very, very holy. Let me use that. Uh, because that is the, the time that I see people yearning Surren total surrender to God. Imagine that is what Jeremiah was addressing, saying, you come in here 
and you come in in your holier-than-thou attitude. You come in here very, very humbled, but you are hypocrites. That is what he was speaking. And may God help us so that when we come here and when we go to our places of work and when we visit friends and when we involve ourselves in the parties, we are the same. Praise be to God. Am I speaking to anyone? We are the same. We cut across. It is cutting across. Where you go, show you are God. Where you go, testify your God. Where you go, say that you know I am so and so and I am saved. And so he was talking about, uh, about uh, hypocrites. And no wonder my Bible here, NIV, if you're using NIV, my title, the title to chapter number seven of Jeremiah is talking about false religion is worthless. That false, that falseness, false living. You are living in the church, you are living this way, and then when you go to the, the, the weddings, all the, the, the upcoming things, the Rurashio, I, I, I hear people are calling them the, 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 the traditional weddings, and you, you get mixed up. Even people cannot say whether you are here, there, all, everywhere. And so he was also talking about the defilement of the temple, that is the worship of other gods, that is the mixing of the true God with other false gods, the gods of Baal. Remember even Joshua, when he was declaring to, his, to the people that he was leading, he said, declare today whether you are going to worship the other gods that you worshipped across the river or you are worshipping the true and the mighty God. And so God is calling us today to declare whether we are worshipping the true God or we have mixed with him with other things. We have brought in other things that we are, we are surrendering to. The other point is, there was stealing. Does that connect with our lives today? Stealing? Does murder connect to our lives today? Is it last night when I was listening to the news and it was said that Livayara, Livayara, some, how many bodies? 23. One, two, three, four, five, six. Up to 23. See, that is a lot of murder. I, I don't know where those bodies came from. Maybe some of them came from Nairobi. Others came from Nyeri. Others came from, from Kitui. Others, and they were, they were thrown there in that river because anything can happen to human beings. Human beings are the worst animals. It is better to meet a, a lion rather than meet sometimes a man who, who has bad intentions, wrong intentions on your life. There was also adultery. There was also committing. You, you, have, you have made a vow. You have taken a vow. You have taken an oath. And then when you go to declare things, you declare other things. So all these things Jeremiah was talking about. And it's also oppression of foreigners, widows, even orphans. And James chapter 1, verses 27 says, the true religion that God accepts, it is taking care of the orphans and the widows in their distress. So we are also called to do that. So Jeremiah was speaking that you have oppressed your widows, you have oppressed the foreigners, you have oppressed the orphans, and I'm coming. I'm, I'm going to judge you because he was God's spokesperson. And today... When we look at the book of Jeremiah, or when we look at this chapter of calling us to reform, my word to all of us is, let us look at our lives. What do we need to reform? What do we need to change? What do we need to amend? Maybe we have, we, if we take a checklist of our lives, what good things do you have? And then what do you need to rectify? What do you need to amend? That is, our, that is the call of our theme this year. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, is telling us to go back to the crossroads. Maybe we have lost the way. A story is told of the hyena, the hyena that didn't know whether to take the right or the, the left. And so it is, the word is calling us to go back to the crossroads so that when we go back to the crossroads, we ask for the godly path. We ask for the godly path. And those who have visited Presbyterian University, they know that 
our motto is finding new paths, the godly path, the new path. So God is calling us to reform and to take the godly path. And which is the godly path? That is the godly path of trusting God, waiting upon God, surrendering to God, and doing things that are pleasant to God. Because you cannot lie to you, you cannot lie to God, because you are yourself and God is almighty. He even knows what we process within us. He even knows our intentions, even before we apply them in this life. And therefore, Jeremiah, after declaring all these, all these words, people are not happy. People are not happy. Even today, we may not be happy that someone is pointing this and that. All we are, we, we are within ourselves, we are processing that we have committed this or the other. But may God help us to walk through this very bitter, bitter time and look into our lives and maybe get to understand what we need to change. The best example that we can get is the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus comes around and gets this woman who was coming at noon to fetch water. What do you think of a lady, a very sound woman who comes to fetch water at noon? Those who are brought up where water is fetched, when is the best time to fetch water? It is in the morning or later in the evening. And so this woman is coming at noon and I'm led to maybe think, could be she was coming there because she could be alone. She could not fight the other women who tell her now, you are with my husband now, you, 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 you have done this or you have taken so and so's husband because she was a prostitute. She wasn't straight. But even if your, your life isn't straight, when you meet Jesus, it is never the same again. He leads you to reformation. He leads you to reform. And my prayer this afternoon is that we meet God at our very point of need, where we have gone this way or that way, that God puts us to the right, right to the right track. Jesus Christ led this Samaritan woman to go back to her right way. And she, she even declared, come. When she went back to the village, she, she was telling the people, come and see a man who has told me things that no one else has told me. So she was ready to understand that this is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that she was talking about. But one thing that is coming out is about worship. Jeremiah was declaring the message of the place of worship. And even this woman, Samaritan woman, when she met Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ led her to understand that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. You must be truthful to God. You must be truthful to God. You must speak the truth to God. You must tell God whatever is in you. The Samaritan woman, when she met Jesus Christ, she could not hide how her life was because Jesus Christ is God, and he knew this woman is is going this way and that way. She's doing things that are not pleasant in my kingdom. And then she was read to, to get Jesus. And therefore, when we read Luke chapter, chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus Christ is hammering the point home and saying, God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in the spirit and in, in truth. And then it continues to say, for such are the worshipers the Father seeks. The Father is seeking that you worship him in spirit and in truth. And worship is not only in the church. Worship God at your workplace. Worship God as you drive along our roads. Worship God as you speak to your children. Worship God as you, as, as you speak to your husband or your wife. Just live a life of worship. Live a life of worship. Because when you do that, God will lead you to reform. Whatever you do in a crooked way, you have the starting point where God is. Praise be to God. Because where God is, things go well. Where God leads you, he leads you to the righteous paths. He leads you to a way that you can respond to your issues in a godly way. Praise be to God. And therefore, walk with me as we look at things that matter 
as we, as we, as we, as we prepare to reform our ways. And I have five issues that I have come up with as we try to understand what we need to do at this time. Point number one, as we reform our ways, our starting point is where God is. So point number one, let us honor God with extravagant love and extreme submission to him. We must surrender to God. We must love our God with extravagant love. I know the parents here will tell me, yes, I love my children so, so much. I am so extravagant when it comes to my children. Parents, are you here? Yes, parents will tell me that. I take them to the best schools. I buy them anything they want. I give them anything they want. And especially Christmas, I treat them extravagantly. We are just from Christmas. And many parents cannot, can connect with that. And even children, even children, I see here some children, even if you are an adult child, I treat my mother, I treat my father. I give them whatever they want. They, they just surrendered themselves so that I could get education, so that I could, do I could be this and that. But that is different from what we are expected to do to our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we need to just love him as his children. We need to show extreme, extreme love and also extreme submission. We submit totally to him. Because when we do that, he'll show you, here you need to reform. 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 May God give you time. Your time, your own time. Some of us pray at 3 a.m. Others pray at 5. Others pray at 3, 3 p.m. Whatever time, tell God to show you where you need to, to reform. Because there must be something that God is speaking to each one of us. There must be something that God has seen and he is declaring today, love me. Submit to me, and I'll show, show you those small, 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 small things. You know, they are, they, they, the Bible talks about small foxes that destroy the, the vineyard. Are we together? Yes, the small foxes that destroy the vineyard. When you love God, when you submit to him, he leads you to understand what these small, finer details are. Point number two. We also need to remember, for us to be able to reform, to work with God, we must express our heart through a lifestyle of holiness. A lifestyle of holiness. And I'm happy we have our children here, the Kiarahos, and they, they, they are new rewards. They are the newest couple, I think, uh, among us here. And when it comes to weddings, when it comes to dealing with matters like they did, let us remember, we need to be holy. We need to be holy before God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 16, he's saying, I am holy, so also be holy. God is holy, and so we should also respond in holiness to him. Point number three, for us to be able to reform or to start reforming, our starting point should be having a pure heart. Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. For you to see God now, and then in the future, in his everlasting kingdom, let you have a pure heart. Acha kubeba beba mizigo mingi. Huna hiyo stamina ya kubeba mizigo mingi. Just have a pure heart, a clean heart. Even David, when he came to God, he said, create me a clean heart heart, a clean heart. We need to have a pure heart so that we'll be able to look into the areas where we need to reform. And then the other point is that we need to have a mind centered on God and rewarded by truth or renewed by truth. We need to have a mind centered on God and renewed by truth. Jesus Christ as he was speaking, he said, start by the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truth is going to set us free from all those small, small things, small, small things, those small, small things that are destroying us. 
those small, small things that we need to look into so that we can, we, we, we can be reformed. And Romans 12, 1b, is saying, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is your true and proper worship. Just surrendering your body, surrendering your life as a love offering, as a sacrifice to God so that it can be holy and pleasing because that is your true and proper worship. So let us learn to surrender our lives to God because when we surrender our lives to God, he deals with us. He keeps us captives. He, 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 he keeps us at such a design that we are able to get into him, to remain connected to him. And finally, the last point that I have is that let us be open and repentant. Let us come to God with open hearts, with open hearts, and let us confess all our sins. Because when we confess our sins, God is so faithful that he's going to forgive us, that he's going to lead us to reformation, that he's going to lead us to change, that he's going to lead us to be acceptable to him in our humility, in our sinfulness. God receives us, he accepts us when we are open to him, when we do not hide anything, when we just come to God with open hearts and say, God, I am a sinner. I need you to save me. I need you to help me. I am so, I am so lost. There are so many things that I need to change. There are so many areas. I am so weak. I do not know. I got lost. I am in the bush. I'm in the middle of darkness. When you come to God with that openness, with that openness, that simple openness, seeking for acceptance, God accepts you. Praise be to God. Psalm 32, 3 and 4. When you read it, let us read it together. Psalm 32, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 32, verses 3 and 4. Are we there? Are we there? Psalm 32, 3 and 4. Let me read it loudly. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hearts were heavy on me. My strength was sapped and in, and in the heat of summer. That is a declaration that David made. And he came to God and God took him and he forgave him. And that is why the Bible talks about, regards David, King David, so highly. Can also be regarded so highly if you open your heart to God, he gets in you, he uplifts you, and shows you the areas that you need to reform. Reform your ways and live. Let's be upstanding. I am requesting you kindly to just close your eyes. Think about what God has done to you. Think about his blessings upon you. Think about the many things that he has enabled you to do. And then think about how unworthy you are before his sight. You are sinful, you are open before God. May you present yourself to God with a repentant heart Confess every sin, and God is speaking to you now, telling you, my child, I still love you. Whatever you have done, I am not counting it. Just come to me. I love you so much, and I'll lead you to reform, and I'll lead you to change, and things will be good. And so as we continue in that mood of prayer, I'm kindly requesting, if you feel that you have come to a point, you are not turning back, you are not going forward, you are at a point that you do not know what to do, this is the start starting point. 
that you surrender your life to God, that he leads you to salvation, and that he walks with you. If there is such a person, please put your head up. Then I will pray with you. If you feel you have come to a point that you want to start all over again so that you can be reformed, please put up your head. If you have such a person, put up your head. If you have any prayer request that you, you feel we need to pray for at this time, you don't have to mention it. You can mention it quietly to God. Please raise up your heart if you have a prayer request that you can pray for. Thank you for those hearts that have been lifted up. Thank you so much. God has seen you. God knows what you have put up to him. God knows what you are going through, and he is going to get into you. He is going to minister to you, and you'll be able to reform your ways and live at this time. Let us pray. Our most loving Father, in that mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for reminding us that you are speaking to us from this pulpit. You are speaking to us through the, the theme that we have for this year. Help us, O oh God, to reform our ways so that we can live with you. Sometimes we get lost in various things, but you have reminded us that when we start with you, you are our starting point. And when we start with you, things come flowing in our lives. That is our prayer this afternoon, that you may remember each one of us, and especially the people who have raised their hearts to you. They have prayer requests. Some have been mentioned in very secret places. Some have been mentioned even in songs. Some have been mentioned even in gatherings. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we are presenting those prayer request to you, that you are going to minister to our people at their very points of need. Oh God Almighty, some have mentioned jobs, some have mentioned sicknesses, some have mentioned want of this kind or the other, some have mentioned sins that they cannot mention to anyone, they have mentioned to you. Dear God, may you remember each one of us. Whatever we have brought to you, may you be with us even as we are open to you. We are repenting all the sins. We are confessing that we are sinners, that we are so weak, that when sin comes, it just gets us. But we want to pray that you clothe us with your holiness, with your goodness, so that we are able to walk in this year. We praise you and we honor you. Be with us as we continue with the service. Be with us as we continue with this year. Guide us in all ways. We thank you and we honor you. For this is our humble prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Let us be, uh, give a bigger appreciation for that. <laughs> we thank God for that uh, powerful message. May it be my prayer and your prayer uh, to start the starting point. And the starting point is to reform our ways and live. Uh, Thank you. It is now time to give uh, our tithes and offering, and uh, we are familiar with the methods of uh, giving. Uh, we can give either by M-Pesa, M-Pesa number 903-800, followed by the account number. You can also indicate your PGS number there. If you are giving uh, as an offering, or as a tithe, you can indicate there. Also, we have a, a PESA link. Uh, the message is displayed there on the wall. And we can also get uh, the account numbers uh, either from the website of the church uh, or from the church apps. The other method is by check, right to the 
uh, PCS St. Andrews Church, uh, indicating at the back what you, are con uh, what you are contributing towards, either tithe offering or, uh, or uh, any other or, or project. And also indicate uh, your PGS number. The other method is by either credit card or debit card or MasterCard. Uh, the Decon have the swiping machine. You only need to indicate and then uh, you shall get that service. You will uh, get the printout, uh, one printout, you put it on the envelope indicating uh, your details. The other method least preferred would be by cash. Uh, we are moving away from cash to, pay, to cashless, but in, in case you have cash, uh, we have envelopes indicate the decon is going to give you the envelope. You put their cash. As we go move out the exit, you put it in the bag. Thank you. Uh, God bless you as you give. And um, the choir will give giving us uh, an anthem. Thank you.
thank you, thank you, our church choir, for this, that moving presentation. Most of us were moving with you, their heads, their toes, and their fingers. Is that so, my friends? Yes, yes. So thank you for this, Father, the Lord has brought us. Let us pray. Our dear God Almighty, we are so grateful to you for this chance that you've given us to just come together and worship you. Thank you for ministering to us through the various things that we have done. We have sung, we have prayed, we have listened to your word. You are reminding us that you are our starting point. When we start with you, you're going to lead us, you're going to help us to see the areas that we need to reform. Our dear God, we are humbling ourselves before you as we walk into this year. Thank you for blessing us so much with gifts that we have given. Some of us are employed, we have given what we have received as salaries. Some of us do business, we have given what we have attained from our businesses. Some of us do even farming and others do very, very small jobs. And from the jobs we have given the gifts. Oh God, we pray that you accept our gifts as a sacrifice and as, a, as an offering so that whatever we have given may be used for your own glory. We know that you have called us to enlarge your kingdom and that is what we pray that the gifts will be used for. We pray that people will know you as we go to preach to them using the resources. We give you praise and honor. We pray that you bless all those who have offered and even those that have not been able to offer because of one or the other reason, we ask of thy blessings upon them so that when we come again, we'll have something to offer. We give you praise, we give you honor, glory, and majesty, for they belong to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm trying to check if there is anything else from the people behind here, but there seems to be nothing. So I'm so delighted to be with you in this service. May God remember you as we start the week tomorrow. May God be with you. Whatever you do for a living, just check on the things, on the areas that need to change in a godly way. Praise be to God. May God help you to serve his people, to serve your family, to serve the, the, the whole world as a servant who fears God, who knows God in holiness and in truth. Amen? Let us pray. God Almighty, indeed, we are so grateful that you have given us the service this morning, this afternoon, even in the morning you are with us, and all the other services that were going on in this compound. We pray that your name may continue to be glorified. Even those that are happening in the afternoon or in the evening, we commit them to you. Dear God, as you dismiss us, dismiss us with your blessings. May we be fouled fit to continue serving you areas where we serve. We thank you and we honor you. For this is our humble prayer of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I now dismiss you to go out and serve God. May he give you peace as you serve him. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep you in the knowledge and the love of God, the Father Almighty, and also his Son, Jesus Christ. May the blessings of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you now and forever. Amen.
Good afternoon once again and praise God. We come to the end of the service. So as we recess, we want to ask the choir to do a hymn for us, redeemed, and you be upstanding. Thank you so much. God bless you. We love you. Be with us now and forgive us all. Amen. Amen. 